So I've heard a rumor. Really? Yeah, I've heard that blood pumps through the heart. <laughs> that's the information I'm entering with. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's good information. All right. yep, now, yep. I also heard something about it having some weird, complicated path. Not so much. No, not so complicated? Not so complicated. Okay. All right, but it does follow a specific pattern, right? Yeah, totally doable. Why? Because it's fun. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, is, does it have anything to do with the lungs? It has something to do with lungs and the breathing and the getting the oxygen and okay. delivering it out to the body. So the heart has to pump blood in a specific way in order to get it through the body. Yeah. That's what I'm understanding. Right. Okay. So blood has to come back into the heart. And when it does that, it is deoxygenated. Yes. It has brought back from the body a whole bunch of deoxygenated blood. Oxygen-less what? So three vessels are going to be dumping into our right atrium with deoxygenated blood. You betcha. The superior vena cava from superior. the head and the arms, the inferior vena cava from basically the whole rest of the body, and there's this little tiny dot right there. That's where the coronary sinus is going to be draining the blood the heart actually uses to do the pumping. So the blood from the right atrium is going to kind of passively move through this little white thing here, which is a valve. Um, that is the tricuspid valve. The the tricuspid valve is going to allow blood to kind of move down into the right ventricle. So the right ventricle here is kind of small, the walls of it is kind of small, um, but it is going to give a good push. Yep, it doesn't need to be real strong because it's only pushing blood to the lungs. Yeah, it's but not, not, not far away. Aren't the lungs they're what, a couple inches away? Yeah, and they're right. like super delicate. <laughs> So when we pump the right ventricle, it's going to contract. It's going to shut that tricuspid valve, right? Close. And then we're going to push open this weird little thing here that's called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary semilunar valve is going to open, sending deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary trunk. We looked at that earlier. Uh -huh. Through the pulmonary arteries. These guys there. Right, out to the lungs. They're going to come back then with oxygenated blood. <gasps> Well, we got some nice oxygen in through the pulmonary veins into our pul or into our left atrium. Uh, left atrium again, passively going to be taking blood in as it moves through the bicuspid valve into our left ventricle. Hey, Marcia. Uh, this left ventricle looks a lot thicker. Yeah, that muscle wall looks really big. Yeah, really big. Do you think the body's a little farther away from the heart than um, the lungs? Um, yep, yep. Yeah, more yep. than a couple inches. I'm thinking. My toes are really far away from my heart. Oh boy, that's a long way to go. So the left ventricle has a really thick wall because thick, as thick, it thick. pushes, it has to push through the aortic semilunar valve, which you can see right up in there, and it's going to push blood up to the atria. I'm sorry, the aorta. The aorta. <laughs> the aorta is then going to be dispersing blood all the way down to your toes, where it's going to drop off oxygen to your body, pick up carbon dioxide, and then come back to the right atrium. Um, and that's basically the path of blood, not too complicated. Nope. Now, there are a few other structures along the way that we need to look at, including the ones that are on our cuspid valves. So the tricuspid and the bicuspid um, rum, are rum. going to have these little cords attached to them. These are called literally the cordae tendinae. They're your heartstrings. They are so cute. Um, and they are going to be attached to these little muscles down at the bottom called the papillary muscles. Uh, papillary muscles are going to attach to the cordae tendinae, and this is going to help anchor the valve closed uh, so when the ventricles are pumping that they don't kind of burst out the other way and we end up pumping blood into our atria as well. Now also in the atria and the ventricle you can kind of see there's a whole bunch of other bumpies in there. Um, there are bumpy muscles you can see them a little bit better on the the lid of the heart. Um, in the auricles on the top so that would be in the atria you can see there are a few bumps in there. Those are called the pectinate muscles. Uh, the pectinate muscles will help give a little bit more force to the blood but not nearly as much as the ventricles will have down here with their bumps which are called the trabeculae carnae. Hmm. Pig Latin for bumps of the heart. Uh huh. Yeah, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> but they are also going to help give us a little bit more of a structural piece. Now, if we look back at the heart, heart, <laughs> there are two important walls that we need to know um, the interventricular septum, which is literally the wall between the ventricles. And again, that hole is not real. 
No, okay, just, that's just for our stand. Just for the lid of lid. the heart, that's it. There is also a structure called the interatrial septum. Um, this is the wall that's going to separate the atria. It's kind of a hard thing to really see on these models, um, but it is going to be a nice wall between the two, which we can see. One other thing I want to look at before we put this guy away are the three layers of the heart. So the heart has three separate layers. The biggest one we can see, it's made of muscle. Awesome. Cardiac muscle to be exact, which is going to be the middle layer of the heart here called the myocardium. The myocardium is going to be what's contracting our heart. Uh, we also have an endo cardium, which is going to be the thin layer that helps make sure that blood doesn't get stuck in the heart. <laughs> that would be bad. That would be bad. Um, and then the pericardium, which is going to be the outer set layer of the heart, which also helps to give us a little lubrication so the heart doesn't get stuck and set on fire. <laughs> that would be bad. That would be really bad. Okay, there is your heart. Talk about heartburn. <laughs> heartburn will leave you.